Hi everyone, Scott here. Welcome back to the Movie Reviewers 100. Um, I, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I made a video, so I wanted to sort of sum up the last couple of theatrical films that I've seen. Um, the weekend it came out, I went to see Baywatch. <laughs> Baywatch was not a show that I watched at all. I just knew about it. I knew that David Hasselhoff was in it. I knew that Pamela Anderson was in it. Um, and it was a show that made her famous playing a character named CJ, a lifeguard. They're all lifeguards. The main character's lifeguards. They stop crime, I guess. <clears throat> so the uh, movie uh, directed by Seth Gordon, who did Horrible Bosses, uh, stars uh, Dwayne Johnson uh, in the uh, David Hasselhoff uh, part and um, uh, Kelly Rohrbach in the uh, in the uh, uh, Pamela Anderson part of CJ. I, I thought that she was just basically a model, but it turns out she was actually she's acted in a few things before. I thought this was like her first movie. I was wrong about that. Uh, who else is in this movie? Zac Efron plays a former Olympic swimmer. He's uh, got a couple gold medals, and he's um, arrogant jerk, <laughs> basically. Uh, thinks that it, um, having to do community service, he had some sort of you know. Some, some, he got some kind of conviction. He has community service, so he has to join, basically, the lifeguards here uh, as, as part of that, but he really thinks it's all beneath him. Also, uh, Alexandra Daddario from the Percy Jackson movie. She plays another uh, person who's joining the team. Uh, and then you've got a couple other supporting actors who I'm, I'm not really familiar with um, uh, who are also on it. It's basically like six main characters. Plus, there is a... Um, Sort of a, um, um, uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure the, what the word for her would be, but she owns a local hotel, and she's looking to buy up more properties. Um, she's played by uh, Priyanka Chopra, um, who is the uh, main character on the uh, show Quantico. Uh, she basically is the villain of the movie. She's um, uh, using her... Um, uh, resources to uh, push some kind of new drug uh, that's um, going around the beach, and so it's up to Dwayne Johnson and the other members of the Baywatch lifeguard team to find out what she's doing and stop her. Um, like I said, I had never watched the show before. Um, I was basically, you know, just there to see the beautiful people and enjoy the comedy, what what there was of it. And there's some good comedy in this. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's nothing really surprising about this movie. Everything that you think will happen probably will happen in the movie. It's, it's, it's quite predictable, um... There's some good humor in it, but for the most part, it's not really uh, nothing to write home about. What's interesting about the last three movies that I saw is that was actually the best presentation in the theater that I'd seen of the three movies. Um, after that, I went to see Pirates of the Caribbean, the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie, and unfortunately, the theater I went to see it, the, I don't know, calibrations were off, the picture was a little blurry in parts, um, there is a couple of shots of... Um, uh, ships from a distance um, that don't look very good. They're not clear. The titles weren't were blurry for some reason. When they had a shot of a person's face in close up, that looked fine. But um, aside from that, it wasn't uh, wasn't the best presentation. I talked to the manager about that afterwards, so it was a little unpleasant. What was even more unpleasant was the sound was so loud that it was distorted frequently throughout the movie. Um, and it just, I had to plug my ears a couple of times because it was so loud. It was very, very unpleasant. Um, so yeah, that particular theater I went to, they need to um, fix their settings because it really was uh, irritating. On the whole, however, I really liked the movie. I sort of compared it to Scream 4 uh, in the sense that you had sort of like a trilogy of movies and then you had this extra one that came out later. Um, the fourth Pirates of the Caribbean movie, um, which is called On Stranger Tides with Ian McShane and Penelope Cruz, that one I only just saw very recently. I skipped in the theater, wasn't interested. I got caught up just basically in case I needed to know something about what happened. And the, uh, the ship, the Black Pearl, that's, uh, Captain, uh, Sparrow and, uh, Barbosa are, uh, fighting over basically throughout the whole series, uh, gets shrunken down and placed in a little bottle. Uh, and kept um, on this ship that uh, is run by Blackbeard in the fourth movie. But um, I'm not really sure how it got that way. I can't remember exactly what happened with the Black Pearl at the end of uh, the third Pirates movie. I think that, basically, Barbosa was in charge of it, basically. He, Barbosa was the one who was captaining the ship, but he had a map that was incomplete, and so he wasn't able to find some kind of treasure. And meanwhile, Will Turner was... Um, uh, the new captain of the Flying Dutchman, uh, because they got him to put a knife through Davy Jones's heart, um, 
because he was dying, he, he got this mortal injury, and so Jack Sparrow positioned his hand with the knife, with the dagger, to, you know, uh, stab Davy Jones's heart. So Davy Jones died, and then at that point, um, the magic surrounding the the, uh, the the Flying Dutchman made Will Turner come back to life and then become the captain of the Flying Dutchman. The problem with that being, well, he's alive now, but um, he's under this, basically, this curse, basically the Dutchman's curse, which means he and his crew have to ferry souls back and forth uh, from one world to the other. Uh, he has to do that uh, every day um, for ten years, and then he gets one day on land. That was the whole thing with... Um, Davy Jones is that the reason why he became like this octopus head is because he ignored his duty. Uh, he uh, he was stopped faring souls the way he was supposed to, and so he and all of his men started getting fish parts all over their body. Now, what's really weird is that in the beginning of the movie, um, uh, Will Turner's son at the end of um, uh, the third Pirates movie, he has his one day uh, on land with uh, with Kara Knightley, uh, who he just married, and then at the end of the credits, you have the post credit scene where Will Turner comes back to shore ten years later, and he, ha of course, has a, a son that's nine years, three months old. Uh, so he gets to see him for the first time. Um, so this movie starts basically a little bit after that. I think Will Turner's son is maybe about 12 years old, 11, 12 years old, and he rows out in the middle of the ocean, and he ties a bag full of stones of rocks to his ankle so and and throws it over the side of the boat so he sinks all the way down to the deck of the Dutchman where he gets to talk to his father and he says I think I figured out a way to lift the curse I need Poseidon's trident and and Will Turner's like don't come down here again please this is this is not a good place for you to be but he's already got the barnacles forming around the side of his face and so I was wondering is he not doing his job bearing the people back and forth, you know, the souls back and forth, because that's the only reason why that would happen. I don't get it. I mean, either way, he's stuck on the ship for, for eternity, basically, you know, spending 10 years at sea and one day on land. And his son actually doesn't want, like that very much. He wants to save his father, and so he goes on this quest, which concludes with him at about, I don't know, 21 or so. I, I don't know how old he is for the bulk of the movie, but presumably Will Turner had one more day on, on land uh, in the intervening time, because the character aged up quite a bit, maybe he's nineteen, you know, maybe he's maybe he's eighteen and a half, maybe he's just, you know, on the cusp of uh, of that uh, occasion when Will Turner gets to spend one day on land, which you know, I I, I don't know, the, the 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 timeline's a little fuzzy. Anyway, so he goes on this quest and he recruits Jack to help him because Jack knows all about sea curses and things like that. So this whole adventure involving him and Barbosa. And uh, Captain Salazar, who's played by Javier Bardem, who uh, got uh, basically a ship blown up and died in this very particular cursed part of the sea, and so now he's a ghost, uh, or sort of like a half-dead character, and uh, all of his uh, crew are also half-dead, and they've all got like parts of their bodies missing, but they're walking around as if they actually are whole bodies, but just like the parts of... You know, there's a guy with half a head, basically. He's got half a head, the lower half of his head, the rest of his missing. And another guy's basically just like the top of his head and like maybe one arm, and that's all he is. Um, some pretty interesting special effects there. Um, so it's this whole quest, basically. Um, and like I said, kind of compared it with Scream 4, and also a little bit like The Force Awakens, <laughs> because there's one character from the first movie who shows up at the very end of the film um, and uh, it doesn't say anything. Kind of like Luke Skywalker and The Force Awakens. Anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. Anyway, um, it was it was an okay movie. It was fine. I, I I enjoyed it. I would have preferred better viewing circumstances. I went to see this in an IMAX theater so I could get you know the larger image. But um, but yeah, the resolution and the image wasn't good uh, in the theater, and also the sound was annoyingly loud. So uh, yeah, not the best experience. Okay, and then so last weekend I went to see Wonder Woman when it opened, um, and the problem with that theater is that the projection was a little bit too dark, really made my eyes tired because most of the movie, um, you've got a couple of scenes that take place on Themyscira, the um, island where Wonder Woman grew up on. Um, most of them take place during <laughs> World War One, and the sky is constantly overcast, and it's kind of a gray-looking movie, and so, you know, it made, really made my eyes tired to have to, to watch this film in, in such a, uh, a dim setting. So, um, overall, I liked the movie. I thought it was pretty good. I was a little surprised by uh, the ending, um, because uh, the uh, bad guy turned out to be someone who I... 
who I didn't expect. I expected something in particular to happen with the bad guy, which didn't happen, but I also sort of predicted something would happen with Chris Pine's character, uh, and which did happen, so I was right about that. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I haven't really loved the DC movies in this new, uh, in this new era of DC. You've got Suicide Squad, you've got the two, um, Henry Cavill Superman movies, um, and they haven't been great. Man of Steel is okay, most of the time, um, but the other two movies I didn't like all that much, and so, um, this is a pleasant surprise in that it's overall a, a pretty solid movie. Uh, again, kind of, same kind of thing with Baywatch, there's really not a lot that's unexpected about this movie. Um, there's a couple of surprises, but for the most part, it's mostly about, I think the movie's carried a lot by the charisma of the actors who are in it. Um, uh, Gal Good Doe or Gadot or Gadot, I'm not really sure how to pronounce her name. I've heard her pronounced a few different ways. She plays Diana, uh, and she's Wonder Woman, basically. She comes from Themyscira, her island, basically, where she lives with her mother and all the other women warriors uh, of that um, of that sort of hidden culture, um, to intervene in World War One and try and... Um, and try and stop the war. She's convinced that God, the god of war named Ares uh, is manipulating men and influencing them and um, wants to find him and kill him in order to end the war. And so there's this whole sort of wartime setting. Um, Chris Pine plays a guy named Steve Trevor who is a pilot and an American spy who's been working to, you know, um, uh, get intelligence on the Germans. And he is sort of her companion. He's great. Chris Pine is really, really great in this movie. He's a lot of fun. Uh, he's very funny. Uh, probably my favorite scene in the movie is when he impersonates a German officer. And one of the other members on his squad impersonates that officer's driver. And so when they try and sneak into this castle at this party, he yells at him in a German accent about forgetting his invitation. It's a really funny scene. Overall, Chris Pine's really, really, really a lot of fun in the film. And there's a lot of other good actors in the movie as well. Um, you've got uh, Danny Houston as a German officer who may be Ares. Uh, Diana's looking into that. Um, and he's got an associate uh, named Dr. Poison, who's played by uh, Elena Ayana. Um, who else is in the movie? David Thewlis plays a British officer of some kind. Uh, you've got um, a couple of actors who I'm not really familiar with on uh, Steve Trevor's squad that join up and, you know, sort of provide backup to Diana as she uh, wages her own campaign. Um, one of the guys, I'm not sure his name, he's an Indian actor, perhaps he's Middle Eastern. He was in a couple of David O. Russell movies like Three Kings and uh, I Love Huckabees. Um, uh, Ewan Bremer uh, from Train Spotting, a lot of other uh, films is in it as well. And um, there's a Native American as well. It's a nice racial balance uh, to the um, to the squad, which is something that's very important for you know modern American films. Always have a racially balanced squad, a lot of different ethnicities, and they talk about how each of them have sort of been marginalized by the you know, the uh, sort of uh, uh, white ruling class, I guess you could say, uh, how they've uh, been sort of messed over. Uh, by are uh, screwed over by uh, by uh, you know the people in power who all seem to be white males. Um, so, uh, but uh, but yeah, some good set pieces in the movie. Uh, some good battle scenes. The um, one where Diana finally puts the costume on and really um, and really sort of charges into battle into the no man's land, and then this other um, sort of a village that's being held by German officers. She just storms in there and kicks a lot of ass and has uh, all her uh, regular human uh, men <laughs> with their rifles backing her up. That's a really good scene. It's a really fun scene. Uh, so overall, uh, generally like the Pirates movie. Um, generally liked uh, Wonder Woman. Um, Baywatch, not as much. It's a fun movie, but, you know, nothing really, uh, noteworthy about it, like I said. Um, and, uh, The Mummy just opened. I really wasn't ever going to see that movie, and I'm, I don't think I'm, I'm going to. Um, the Red Letter Media guys did a video on The Mummy, and they were talking about how, <laughs> how, uh, how it seems to be more intended for international audiences than American audiences, because it's just so dumb the way that it's made, and everything is explained very clearly, and there's a lot of voiceover that can be replaced in post by other people speaking different languages, you know, to make it more palatable for other countries. Um, but apparently China has banned it because of the supernatural element. They don't want supernatural stuff in their movies. 
uh, in China. So they were expecting a lot of money back from China. They're not going to get a dollar of it because China's banned it, something like that. Um, and, oh, and a bunch of countries have banned Wonder Woman, too, because uh, <laughs> the Wonder Woman is played by an actress from Israel. <laughs> they don't like uh, Israel people, apparently. Yeah, it's uh, every single major movie seems to have something about it that people want to, you know, complain about it and ban it and everything like that. It's it's crazy. It's nuts. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the next big film is that I'm going to be uh, looking at, but I'm, you know, going to check something out probably this upcoming weekend, so I'll make a video on that uh, next week. Um, in the meantime, though, I also wanted to talk about um, Glenn Headley. Glenn Headley uh, is an actress from Chicago who passed away uh, within the last week, um, which is kind of sadly ironic because um, sh the last film that she was in was The Circle. She and Bill Paxton played Emma Watson's parents. Bill Paxton passed away a couple of months ago, and now Glenn Headley's passed away. It's a really bizarre coincidence that that happened. Um, but uh, the two movies that uh, are probably she's probably best known for are Dick Tracy, uh, which Warren Beatty starred in and directed. She plays Tess Trueheart, his longtime girlfriend. Um, there's a really, really fun cast in that movie. Uh, Al Pacino plays the head of the uh, gangsters, uh, William Forsythe, Dustin Hoffman, uh, Madonna, uh, um, uh, James Caan has a little cameo, um, Mandy Patinkin is in it. Uh, you know, really, really fun cast and a very, very striking visually movie. Um, it kind of reminds me of Speed Racer, actually, because it was a movie that got a lot of hype but didn't really end up doing that well and I think is uh, thought well of uh, in the past, at least by me. I, I, I think that it's a fun movie. Um, the other movie that Glenn Headley is well known for is uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, the comedy with uh, Steve Martin and Michael Caine. A really, really fun movie. Very, very clever. Um, uh, Michael Caine and Steve Martin play a couple of con artists who um, bilk people out of uh, valuables and large sums of money. And they go to this resort, basically, uh, as, a, as sort of a team, and they set their sights on Glenn Headley, who is a sort of naive girl from the Midwest who's on vacation and happens to, you know, have won a lot of money recently in the lottery, I think. Um, and so they, they form this scan. Uh, they, 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 they make it sort of a competition, like, whichever one of us can convince her to give him, like, 50 grand, then, you know, that, 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 that person will be the winner of our, our, our little bet right there, a little wager. Uh, really, really fun movie. Um, definitely one that you should uh, take a look at if you haven't. It's directed by Frank Oz, uh, who's done a lot of fun movies over the years. Um, so yeah, very sad that Glenn Headley is no longer with us. She had a pretty long career. I haven't seen that much of her in the last few years, um, but it may be I'm looking in the wrong places like Natasha McElone. She uh, wasn't in films for quite a long while, and then I realized she had been on Californication with David Duchovny for a bunch of seasons. I didn't even know about it. Um, but anyway, yeah, Glenn Headley is very sad that she's gone, because um, she's a, a fun... She's She kind of reminds me a lot of Joan Cusack, actually. They're both very sort of upbeat, uh, comical personalities. Fortunately, we still have Joan Cusack uh, to enjoy, um, and hopefully will for many more years. I think she's... I'm not sure if she's older or younger than her brother John Cusack, but uh, anyway, they're both still around, which is nice. Um, so that's my video for this week. We will um, maybe see another one next week. If I see something interesting, uh, I'll make a video about it um, in the meantime. And uh, thanks very much for watching, and uh, please check out our Facebook if you haven't already. I like to keep making videos for this channel because we still have viewers. We still have people uh, commenting on our stuff and uh, checking out our Facebook, so I don't want to leave anyone... Um, in the lurch going, why haven't they making any more videos? I want to keep making videos for you guys. So thanks very much for watching again. See you next week. Bye.